All right. Um, I welcome everybody to uh, today's um, monthly call. Um, let's, I guess we start with the homepage, right? Oh, I was muted. Hi, hey, everyone. Um, yes, we can start. Um, yeah, so the agenda is a Fortran long, then there's a STB lib. Um, are there any other points that you would like to, to add? No. Um, maybe one uh, I just saw in the, um, on this course, there's a question about presenting FPM at the BCS Fortran uh, meeting. Maybe we can also discuss that later. Yeah. Uh, okay. If that's it, um, I propose that we start with the uh, Fortran long uh, reporting to uh, to Sphinx. And Neil, is it you? Oh, yeah, muted. It's default setting from a university. Everybody's muted on entry. Yes, should I share my screen first? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Sure, thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Hanil Panchal and I have ported the current existing site of fortanlang.org to Sphinx and this is a, a build for the current existing PR that I have opened at the uh, GitHub and uh, please have a look at it and uh, I would be it would be very grateful of you to please provide me, me with your suggestions and uh, comments on this site. Uh, I have also added the translations to it. The translation is left, but uh, support for translation has been added as uh, we have added, decided to add the seven languages and uh, uh, the translation is just left. Uh, other than that, the entire support for that is ready. We have also made this uh, DAC theme, like the entire page would also be available into the DAC theme. This is the main page of the uh, Fortran Lang. Then um, I would also like to shift to the learn section. Then this is the learn section to it. The majorly the design of the entire site, I have kept it very much similar to the existing site while adding some base for 10 colors and a style, uh, styling from this Phoenix design. This is the compiler's page. And uh, um, this is the uh, community page. And here we have the GitHub community stats and uh, this is about the community projects. And the how to get involved and all those factors. This is the uh, GitHub contributor graph. It is totally interactive and can be uh, specified or uh, made for a specific repository as well for various uh, time periods. And we can also see the monthly active contributors to it. Then I've also made this for the contributors so that we could honor our contributors to the Fortran Lang. So I will be uh, showing the pictures of all the contributors in all the rep various repositories of the Fortran Lang. And uh, then this is the packages page. This search is also unable to search a package. Then we have here the featured topics. These are the first 50 topics, most featured or most uh, stated topics on the site, then this are the various sections into the site. And this all the data is fetched daily by using a cron job and a GitHub workflow. 
so that we have the recent data and uh, as well as uh, we could also uh, prevent any other downtimes that we may encounter then we have this new section and all the posts are there yes um thank you um, sir So I think uh, it's really great work so far. And uh, now the only thing we need is uh, feedback basically from everybody to spot things which we might have overlooked uh, when porting this, or things which don't, uh, which worked in the uh, old page, don't work uh, and don't work in the, uh, in the new one anymore, or if there's something uh, which was always some, uh, something which was badly designed in the old page, we could also uh, try to improve uh, in this new iteration. And once uh, we are there, I'm really looking forward to merge this one and then get everybody in the community en engaged again, and we can try to localize it. So uh, based on, uh, on this, is there any uh, immediate feedback which, uh, which you have for us? What is the time frame to launch this new website, which is soon fully really agreed? So good, good job, congratulations. Thank you. Sir. So that's by the end of August, or I don't know. Yeah, it's, a, uh, it's a good question. Um, I think we uh, we want uh, to be done uh, before the end of this uh, this summer. So when the Google Summer of Code is. Uh, Ends. Uh, this should uh, this project should be finished and uh, and merged. Yeah. So, so it's really important that people are looking now. Exactly. Uh, yeah. No. Yeah. And report. Is there anything mission critical on the Fortran Lang website that would be detrimental if it was broken and we when we launched the new one? Because if, if we're fairly confident that everything that's really important is working correctly, you're probably going to get feedback a lot faster if we just switch to the new one. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Uh, to avoid pushing the website with something broken would be really cool if everybody could. Yeah. First. And then we push <laughs> it and then we find out which, uh, which things we overlooked. And uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a big pull request. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's going to take some time um, to review everything, and it's, it's probably also hard uh, to review everything properly. Mm -hmm. okay. But uh, but I would be very hesitant to just push the new page and then wait for complaints. That's probably not <laughs> not a good uh, design strategy. It, it's, uh, it's it's debatable. I think. I mean, you're going to have a hard time getting enough eyes on it to be sure that everything works correctly. But if everything that's important works correctly, then all of the all of the extra eyeballs is actually beneficial. Could, could we just add a note on the current Fortran Long website that people may look to the other website if they want to, to find things? Yeah. I was about to suggest maybe is there a way to ping everyone in the Fortran like for uh, this course? Well, this is going to be a lot of spam for people. I don't know if this is a good idea. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can only think I can not really think of people that will complain, but as in people with like certain access, maybe mm. like level three access and above. Yeah, this is possible. There's a section where we can. Um, I will have a look. But, but yeah, even now on the fortanlong.org, there's uh, uh, something get started. But there could be something a new website just below that, or testing version of a new website, and people mm -hmm. could click on that and. There's and a, yeah. So there's one aspect we can do is we can take the existing website and put a big banner across the top of it that says, "Hey, if you're interested, please go check out the new version." But you could out you could also do the reverse. Push the new version with a big banner. If you if you think the if you need something on the old version because you found something that doesn't working, you can still get to it. 
so yeah, something we could do uh, is um, create a subdomain like um, like olds.fortlang uh, org and put mm -hmm. there the the old web page and then deploy a new one with a really with a banner which then uh, links to the old page if something is missing. We might even make this like a, a 404 page. So yeah, we also should probably check uh, whether all uh, URLs are still valid, which we had in, uh, in the old one. I think some are broken because we added this uh, language subspace. So I think if you would deploy it right now, then no link would work, which is a bit unfortunate. So probably have to go through all the, all the pages and make a redirect to the English translation, which would also be okay. But there's something to keep in mind. Yeah, uh, I don't, yeah um, let's maybe set it for end of August. Then we, uh, we can plan to deploy it mm. and make some continuity uh, version where you can find the old page while we uh, then switch to a new one with a disclaimer to make everybody aware. But let's, let's take at least a month time uh, to give people a chance to look at this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep, that's fair. I I would um I want to ask something. Where do you want us to put the comment, uh, and uh, have something else on top of that? So like I've already spotted a couple of things with regards to coloring, for example. Um, should we just post on the Discord or on the GitHub? Um, so yeah, uh, there I guess there are two ways to give feedback here. Uh, there's this pull request now where you can comment. Um, of course. Mm -hmm. and just leave a regular review, but uh, there are also the possibility to just uh, raise those discussions in the discourse. Yeah. Um, what, whatever works best. So if you yeah. have something, uh, if you find something concrete where you want to uh, annotate a code and say, okay, this line looks strange, then I guess the GitHub one is the best. If it's more something that you, uh, you say, okay, this is a general design thing which we should discuss, I guess, when having a screenshot or two uh, demonstrating this uh, and discussing this on discourse might be better suited than um, than the Fortran line uh, than, the, than the GitHub threads because I don't know whether you can actually I mean it starts to break down after uh, 100 comments or more yeah, no, I do, I web do. UI. yeah yeah uh, okay so which brings me to the second bit which is if we ask people for comments they will give a lot of comments that are uh, basically they will spam with comments that are irrelevant to what we expected in a sense mm -hmm. so they will say that oh i don't like this style maybe we should change this button maybe we should do this which is um i'm not i'm not sure if um we're gonna get a lot of noise basically so maybe uh that is um, a consideration that we should have um when we ask people to give feedback, like to try and limit the scope of the feedback that they will give into, does this look right, not change the underlying style of the website to something that is more of your liking specifically, because everyone likes different things. And I think what we have right now is fairly good. Like we should expect like an, an inflow of that basically. Yeah. yeah okay. I guess we can try. So if, the, uh, if we get too much noise, then we can still limit the scope. But for now, I would just leave it open because uh, we are in the progress of changing basically everything because we changed the static site generator while still staying as close as possible to the original. But maybe there's also the chance to say, okay, this is something I never liked about the Fortran Lang page. We, we can improve this now. And then uh, it's probably also a good point to address such feedback. Mm -hmm. or at least collect it and then maybe address later. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if we, if we collect those in the discourse, there we have a quite a convenient tool to split the, uh, this kind of comments into new threads and keep us organized. If we have this on GitHub, uh, this is going to be a real mess. 
Yeah, I don't know. There's not uh, there's not that much tooling around to to keep multi-threaded discussions uh, yeah. organized. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I agree. Actually. Okay. Any other comment on that? If not, again, uh, good job. It's very nice. Um, <clears throat> then I think the next topic is on the SDB lib. I will share my screen if I can. Uh, that one. Yeah. Do you see my screen? Yes. Yeah, thank you. So, um, yeah, last month I opened a uh, a pull request on GitHub. Uh, and, uh, what I did is just propose, I extracted all the, so in the specs for SDBLib, there were small programs, just like as example for the different functions and subroutines. And so I extracted all of them <clears throat> and, cre and created a standalone programs for, from, from all of them. Uh, the main reason is that quite many people complains in the past that uh, there were typos or there were mistakes in the program, so we're not able to compile them. Um, that's why I extracted all of them. Um, my question is about the structure. Um, so currently, so the, I put them first next to the source uh, directory, uh, but then there was some discussion and uh, we decided to move that in the source uh, directory. So now they are here. So have in the source directory of CDBLIP, there's a directory examples. And uh, yeah, the structure of examples is like for test. So actually for each module, there is a lot of, uh, there's multiple examples for all of them. Um, so that's that's my first question. Is it okay to keep in, to keep this directory there next to test and next to all the, the source? And the second question is that these examples are now added to the test. And that means that when you run a CMake and you want to test uh, all of them, also all the examples will be tested also. Uh, in total, now it's more than two, it's almost 300 uh, small programs that are tested. It's quite a lot. So I don't know if it's a problem also, or if we should want, yeah, if we'd like to find on the, alternative to avoid all these tests. But uh, yeah, they are not really tests, they're just small programs. I think it's very important that we run them. So um, doesn't help, I mean, run them and verify that they are actually working as expected. Otherwise, I mean, uh, if there's no automatic way in compiling and checking whether they are doing what they're uh, supposed to do, then we will just move from, they have, now they have no typos and they compile to uh, their valid fault from, but they might not do, be doing what we expect. So, um, of course, uh, just running the program and hoping that the exit code is correct so it doesn't crash, uh, it's not a real test, but at least it's better than, uh, than nothing. Yeah, that's, that's currently the case. So they are just running and running fine or without bugs. Uh, I mean, actually, by running them, I, I found uh, quite a few of, of bugs and that the program were, comp were compiled, could be compiled, but were not uh, running properly. So that's indeed useful. Just take a bit, uh, a bit more time than, uh, than usual. I think in terms of the source code layout, it might be beneficial to stick with like the FPM expected layout. So the examples should be in an example folder at the top level, because I think I think in the very long run we'd like to just use FPM and not have to not have to use CMake. Probably we'll still maintain a CMake build system, but it, it will make a little bit more sense if it followed the FPM structure. And then in terms of them being tests, if you want them to be tests, I would write them as tests. You can still include test code in in your documentation. I don't see anything. I don't see any reason not to. 
Um, but, but if you want them to be tests, make them tests. Um, yes. So for, yeah, for the first point for the, the place. Um, yeah, so first I, I put it also next to uh, on the top also, but I don't know. I don't remember who mentioned it. Would it, uh, it it's a bit strange because then we should also move test on the top and not keep it in the, the source directory. I think this is a natural thing to do, uh, move the tests. Um, one, uh, one design decision we made in the past, which is not optimal, shouldn't, uh, um, shouldn't be the reasoning uh, for having the examples in the same place. So we should uh, follow the design uh, we use for FPM projects. So, so you would advise to move test instead? Yes, I mean, this can be a separate uh, action, but it shouldn't affect where the examples live. Yeah, okay, I can open up a, uh, another pull request to move the test. That's not, uh... I mean, what we eventually want to do is something like have this, if you uh, if you had the standard repository and we would build it with FPM, you would, uh, you would build it first and you would uh, Properly uh, run uh, FPM tests to uh, execute all the uh, all the test executables and verify the code is correct. And then you have the FPM run, where you can uh, select the examples and then run individual examples to see what they do. And yeah, since we don't have the separation in CMake, we declare them as tests, and you can run all of them. And if you prefix them with uh, with all with example. And you can even select all the examples with, uh, with a, a regex and, uh, and C test, but this is, I guess, as close as we can get to the FPM experience. Yeah, so I did, so for FPM, not the behavior, so there's a small script for FPM to make the directory, and so it runs, as you mentioned, so if you want to test, it's FPM test, and it just run the test, and if you want to run an example, then you can mention FPM run dash dash example, and then the name of the examples. Um, for CMake, you can also specify the, with C test, you can specify the directory uh, for the, that you want to test. So that's also, but uh, yeah, then I will move, open on the uh, pull request to move a test and um, I will move back example to the top, that's fine. Yeah, then for this, yeah, but then it's also for the second question um, because there are no more tests anymore if you run, if you move them as example, except for CMake. But because, yeah, there's more than, there's almost 250 programs. So changing all of them will take a bit of time. Well, it should be for another pull request also then. Okay. I will do that. Yeah. Thank you. There are no other comments. Um, then I propose that we can discuss a bit about FPM and the BCS Fortran as you meeting. I believe John made this this uh, suggestion or request. Yes. So I um, mean. It's just a follow up to uh, my comments from about, I think it was meeting two, two months ago. The September BCS meeting is coming up. We don't quite have a full um, roster of speakers yet. So one of the problems is it's in September and it's a difficult time for academics, including myself, but unfortunately that's the, that's the timing we've got. But I'm keen to get anyone from anywhere to give a presentation on anything they'd like to talk about. Uh, we've got NVIDIA coming, they're coming to talk about uh, the compiler and um, automatic parallelization across GPUs. I think that's what they're going to talk about. Um, John Reed should be giving a pre presentation on the standards development work, that's as usual. And then we, we normally have a talk on compiler conformance to the standards. So that's a sort of quick overview about which compilers are lagging behind and which compilers are um, tracking the standards as closely as possible, although they are all 
quite far behind. And every few years, another compiler drops off the list. So there's increasingly fewer compilers to, to talk about. But yeah, so that, I mean, that's the main flavor of, of, what, of what we talk about. And, uh, but I mean, that said, we've talked about lots of other things before. We've talked about rival languages. We've talked about numerical computing in a sort of abstract sense. We've talked about um, how people manage code, how people manage teams. You know, everything's on the table as long as it's somewhere in the region of scientific and engineering computing. So if, if you know anyone that would like to give a presentation, and I thought, I thought FPM, I mean, it's exciting stuff. Standard lib stuff is also, you know, very pertinent. If anyone has the time, we can do it. Or perhaps uh, Janis and I will maybe go offline and we can have a discussion about um, a, a lecture series. That's another, that's another possibility. But historically, we found that having all the Fortran talks in one place on one day was much better. We got much better attendance than sort of spreading them out throughout, um, throughout the year. Although COVID has changed everything. Now, now we're all used to hybrid meetings. You know, virtually everyone is set up for them now. And uh, as we have done for the last two years, this will be at a hybrid meeting as well. And there's no reason why um, the presenters can't be remote as, as we have I've done in the past. I think that might also uncouple the the uh, timing. We might shift timing maybe back to the summer, which is where we used to be. And we got a much better roster of speakers at that time. Start start of academic year is always a always a bad time. Um, thank you. When is the deadline uh, for submitting something? Uh, well. It's quite flexible at the moment. I wouldn't say there's a hard deadline, but if it helps focus people, I would like, you know, ideally to have the lineup finished in a, in a few weeks. I mean, it's only two months away now. So if we could get it sort of done and dusted, but that's not to say there won't be last minute changes. Inevitably something, something comes in and someone drops out. That's the usual sort of, sort of thing. And but, when but the it's the, 20, the 29th of okay. September. And it's from. J Sorry. Go ahead, John. I was oh, just going to ask a question. So go ahead, John. Sure. It's it starts at uh, 1400 BST and usually ends at five. So it's only a, a few hours. Uh, <clears throat> what I was going to ask, this is Gary Como, is uh, John, is it is this um, set of presentations open to the public or just to BCS members? It's uh, open to everyone. So we all our meetings have always been open to the anyone who cares to turn up okay because yeah. it would be it would be great to be able to follow along on discourse about the timing and the zoom meeting links or whatever yeah um, because ab ab absolutely i'm always interested in hearing what john reed has to say and um uh especially since we all just came back from the the bg5 meeting <laughs> i'd be interested to hear his impressions <laughs> compared to my right. own okay <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, I guess the other thing is uh, we hold our AGM in the morning of, of that day. And that usually is confined to BCS members, although in principle, anyone can come along if, they, if they're interested. Uh, we, we, I mean, I, I'm, I'm the current chair. I'm very keen to get new blood in. People who are a bit enthusiastic about, about things and it can help drive developments and you don't have to be a member of the BCS to be on the committee. So it's, you know, that's not a barrier. You do to be hold certain positions like treasurer, you have to be a BCS member and chair, you have to be a BCS member. But we have other uh, roles. We have just standing members who can contribute anything. So if anyone feels so motivated, you're very welcome to come and join us. There's, there's, there's not a lot that we do at the moment. It's, it's entirely driven by uh, what the community wants. But I would say that at least we are backed by BCS, so uh, there is funding, some support. Uh, so, you know, if, if you want an infrastructure that can help you run events, it, we do have to have that. Although that said, I tend to um, tend to rely on UCL where I'm based and uh, run events from there too. But anyway, that, that's more, that's my bit. But yes, please. I mean, you know, if you think of something at the last minute, you can still contact me. And 
if there's if it's a 20 minute thing that's great oh i should say the other thing we've had in the past is we've had open discussions about the future of fortran so that's a quite a recurring theme you know every five or ten years we go well is this, is this the end are we coming to the end of fortran and uh fortunately we're not but it's, it's always interesting to hear people's opinions you know we talk to compiler developers and end users and everyone in between and it's just interesting to hear what, what their opinions are but it's certainly true that the age profile of our group is you know heavily uh, above 40 anyway for sure yes. so that there's not a lot of new blood coming in at the, at the bottom end or if there is they're just not joining organizations which i think it's another thing people tend not to join formally join organizations anymore you just want to just join a you know discourse group or a mailing list and uh, get going without any formality yeah i i think that's accurate uh i i know at least I, my group is like a hundred plus people and it's mostly fortran and i don't think anyone knows about uh, bcs and same for the mechanical engineering uh, with uh, rolls royce in imperial so they they also work with almost exclusively with fortran yeah, I'm, pre um, I'm pretty sure we've had speakers from, from them in the past. It's yeah. it, it, I, it all it takes is for one person to leave and the sort of contacts uh, disappear. The one the one group that we do have reasonably good contact with is the Institute of Physics and the computational yeah. the computational physics group because I used to be a member of that committee. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I mean, we can discuss about the contacts privately. I, I might yeah. be able to point you to some people that are like. Tenure, prof tenure professors in Imperial that uh, they're not going anywhere. Um, but yeah, with uh, regards to like the Fortran language dying, I, I think, and getting like newer members in, I think um, uh, I might be slightly able to help at least for the UK uh, because we're issuing like a research projects for to train PhDs and uh, I managed to squeeze in a Fortran project in nice. that. Yeah, so maybe that's gonna be, maybe that will have some impact, that will say. I should put you in contact with Ian and Jane, who are, um, they're the, you know, one of the primary educators of Fortran in the UK. I, I don't, I, I'm pretty sure they used to visit Imperial uh, if, if they weren't based there, so. Um, they were, I think they were based at Kings for a while, but I'm pretty sure they visited Imperial. They'll correct me, I'm sure, if they're watching this recording. But uh, yeah, I should put you in contact at the very least. Yeah, good. Sebastian? Yeah, um, I think we will for sure find somebody uh, to present. Um, Personally, if uh, I mean, if there's opportunity to present, I would, uh, would be happy to. Even if, it, uh, but since I can't come in person, I would uh, for now uh, leave this open. If somebody else is more interested, uh, I know uh, Brett and me, we, we both have uh, given talks on uh, FPM in the past, and uh, um, we also uh, have organized science lib talks and. Uh, talks on Fortran in general, so we will probably be able to organize one again. Mm. J uh, just have to find uh, somebody uh, who is interested uh, in leading this, uh, and especially, uh, I mean, if, if they're able to visit, and it would be even uh, even better if they can have it, have it in person rather than uh, uh, opting for, uh, for uh, um, online presentation, I guess. I mean, ideally, I, that'd be great. But yeah, sorry about. I mean, I'm London based, but uh, I I wouldn't say that I, I know much about FPM, uh, even though I'm like I'm working with it. Uh, so probably it would be better if you gave the presentation for that. I, I want to give somebody who has actually been a lot more involved over the last few months the opportunity to to give a talk, but uh, I'm always happy to give give at least a demo or something on FPM. I think Lawrence is UK based, so maybe it's close. Mm -hmm. uh, we should ask him. Maybe uh, it's close enough by for him. 
or in terms of or maybe fitting uh, i don't know um yeah it would, it would be really great that someone mm -hmm. could, could, go, could go there instead of remotely so, uh... yeah is he in bath he's like i think he's, he should be a couple of hours away right he's not that far away yeah, if it's a bath, it's a few hours by train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you should be okay. Yeah, but yeah, so we mentioned a few people. We can contact them by email or via Discord. You know. Yeah, there are a few uh, uh, active developers based in Europe, which would have, uh, which would be quite close by. Yes. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's event for just one day, right? So, uh, so if you have to travel uh, for quite a while to just get there and then uh, back again, if you go, uh, can't combine it with uh, like staying uh, a bit in, uh, uh, in London for, uh, for maybe a short holiday then, um, or other business trip, then it's kind of difficult to organize, especially if, uh, if it's a, it's a, a long way to travel. Yeah, we've, we've certainly had speakers before that um, have come from, say, Switzerland, and they've stayed for the weekend, mm -hmm. and uh, you know that's that's certainly happened before. Yeah, it's great. I think there are some ideas, so we need to clarify that and uh, discuss with some few people. So, yeah, thank you for the invitation. Well, thank you very much. So I think that the all the items are in the agenda are checked. Um, any other business? Uh, I'm, I might have like uh, some short things that uh, I'll be adding FPM. I'll attempt to add FPM to the to the Imperial Graduate School courses and stuff. I might message uh, some of you later today or this week uh, if you want to have a look um, because I think it's behind our our uh, repo, so I can't actually give you access and it, with Imperial. Um, and um, oh yeah, the other thing was, um, should we maybe add VS Code uh, in Fortran line in the news section? Um, I'm not sure. Like, I, there are some news monthly, but they're not that many compared to El Fortran, let's say. There's uh, no reason not to. Um... We have been uh, adding news to new project uh, as they come up, but usually uh, if they're, I mean, we did it uh, in the initial phase for, I think, uh, FFT pack and min pack when they were added to show what's going on. But then when the development slowed down, we, uh, we just, uh, we didn't continue uh, to add them. But if there's uh, kind of enough things to announce, uh, uh, for VS Code uh, in a month. I mean, it doesn't have to be there regularly if you say, okay, uh, it's not uh, interesting enough for this month, but, but for sure we can add it. Yeah, okay. I think the, 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 the not necessarily being on every month is uh, reasonable because we're gonna add F, uh, FYPP support in a bit, I think, or attempt to add it. Uh, but after that, I don't know like if I will have time to do anything. Okay. Um, yeah, but I had one more thing, uh, which was okay. Um, do we have like a communications email for Fortran Line? People have been sending me messages privately for uh, like uh, to say thank you mostly, but in case actually, if someone wants to get in contact with us, uh, uh, maybe we should have like an email or somewhere to to get the messages. If they want to send us a private message, I mean. I think currently the best mechanism to privately contact uh, anyone in the Fortran community is using the discourse uh, private message uh, thing. Or if you have by chance acquired the email address of somebody in the community uh, um, to just send them an email. Um, we don't have, uh, I mean, we have a domain, so in principle, uh, we could also have something like um, set up some infrastructure for uh, for central email address, which we, uh, other than just a redirect or, uh, or collect this. I don't know uh, whether this is actually feasible. I, I don't 
think we've really had much discussion or designated any like officers or officials or, or, or leaders in the, the organization. So I don't know who would be included in such an email. Like if you wanted to send a, an email to Fortran Lang, who gets that? We, we haven't had any discussion about that, so. Yeah. I, uh, yeah sorry, go Sebastian. Uh, I mean, right now, I guess the only reason to contact Fortran Lang would be so like uh, the website is being down or something, this course is not working where somebody of the admins has to do something because this is kind of out of uh, where you have to do something on infrastructure. So we, I mean, we have this dedicated group on GitHub uh, and uh, we also uh, uh, at this course uh, have the admins which, uh, which are reachable for this purpose. So I've, I've had uh, at least most of the interactions are for thank you, but uh, I've had at least two interactions which are very different than that. Um, one of them was um, for, it was a security vulnerability inquiry effectively uh, about the VS Code stuff and Fortaless, which is not part of Fortran Lang, but it was for both in the same email uh, about like how from, a, from an agency. And um, yeah, so like I, I, they found my personal email and they sent me an email, but uh, yeah, I guess I, I, I didn't feel like, I didn't think that uh, telling them to oh, post it on, this course was uh, the appropriate thing to do. And the second thing was sponsors. So like companies or groups that want to sponsor stuff. Uh, yeah, so I, I don't think these two categories fit very well in people being able to communicate uh, publicly and openly. Yeah, we had contact with security researchers in the past. This was usually done uh, um, they had then uh, either, uh, contacted uh, somebody where they know the email address uh, in advance or found it out. So similar like you described. And I think we talked uh, a few months ago or uh, in one month the calls about sponsoring. And yep. uh, I think we don't currently have the infrastructure to support this, at least not for Fortran Lang as a whole, because um, it's more like a community organization with some uh, volunteers uh, who take responsibility for keeping the infrastructure running. But uh, out of this position, I don't think we can actually organize uh, um, some, I guess, you know, um, we would need something like, uh, um, we probably need to apply for uh, at NumFocus to get some form um, uh, umbrella organization where we can uh, organize this uh, under or found our own. I don't know what, what is, which is more feasible. I mean, GitHub sponsors is uh, fine. And I think for UK, it's up until 100, uh, so up until 8,000 pounds per year. And the US is 100,000 pounds per year that you're, you're good. After that, you have like some problems with tax. Um, but yes, like that's a, that's a viable way. Like the organization can open that and it will be one of your accounts that's connected to that, like, or an account that some, like one of the admins opened or the four admins opened. Um, and it should be tax wise. It should be okay. Uh, as long as uh, actually, uh, I don't know about Germany, but UK and US, it should be relatively okay. Yeah, this is the uh, main big asterisk there. Uh, it, I guess this is the main problem. I mean, right now, uh, we don't have uh, like you can't pin down where where Fortran Lang is uh, is an organization, uh, a rich place on earth. Um, so, and does it matter? Uh, uh, and uh, and to say, okay, one person now is going to have the responsibility for the financial uh, part. This organization is quite quite a huge thing. I mean, still, uh, for most of us doing this, um, it's a volunteer thing. Um, 
and yeah i will uh, i will uh, i would uh, be more happy with uh with moving this forward if we have uh, would have some formal organization around for um if we could establish this as a community rather than decide ad hoc that somebody is going to do this now so so non focus right? So like effectively under the umbrella. Uh, of for example, I mean, uh, we have some experience with non focus uh, since Andre is uh, funding Al Fortran um, over this venue. So this might be uh, something where we could uh, decide to focus our energy uh, in to get accepted into non focus. Yeah, we've uh, looked into it. It's a it's a it's a big thing. Like you, you we need to put some work. But but I think it's uh, it's worth establish uh, establishing something more formal. We should also review together with the community uh, how we're going to uh, to handle this uh, new responsibility. I mean, uh, I mean the most important part of what has to be transparent. Yeah, I mean, there are the, I, I think so. Uh, there are a few ways of doing that. Num focus is one of the ways that is purely transparent, but I think there are other. Uh, funding schemes that uh, allow for full transparency in terms of finance. But in general, I think it might, it might be a good idea to start thinking of uh, like setting some goals for the organization, like things that we need to, uh, that need to be accomplished in the long term and uh, like have an eye for these things. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm just going to interject there. It, it might be possible the BCS can help with this. Um, I'm, I'm just going to throw that out there and maybe have a offline discussion with, with people afterwards. But um, you know, there, it is an existing organization. It's got structures. It's it's got funding. It's got all those things in place. It's it is purportedly an international organization. It's not it's not the British Computer Society as it used to be. It's it's meant to be for everyone and, and inclusive. Um, but I'll, I'll just throw that out there as a sort of option. It wouldn't it wouldn't be binding, but I don't see why you couldn't operate, say, as a subgroup um, that we would, or you guys could maintain. I mean, there's no reason why, um, you know, it couldn't operate like that. I think the only, as I say, the only requirement would be that a few key members of the group would have to be BCS members. That's That's all. The rest can be volunteers because we're a volunteer organization as well. Uh, when you say BCS members, you mean chartered or just registered? Just registered. It could be anybody, students, anyone. Oh. I mean, okay. students get four years membership for about 30 pounds, I think. So, um, you know, that's one way in. If you, but as, as, there are only a very few positions on the committee that absolutely have to be BCS members. But anyway, I'll just, just throw that out there for something to think about. We can talk about the practicalities if you want uh, uh, offline or uh, perhaps at the meeting if anybody can make it. Um, I can even raise it at the AGM, in fact, if you want me to do that. Yeah, yeah thank you for the suggestion. <clears throat> uh, I think I agree. It's not the first time that we have this discussion for more formal organizations. So. We probably need more, a bit more discussion and thinking about that. What, what it involves. Yeah. I think Yanis is right. You need to decide what your goals and aims are, and yes, indeed. What, you know what legal frameworks you you need around that, if any. Yeah, this need for a, a more formal organization is starting to come up more frequently. So, I think it's time to start exploring different avenues, and that's a very welcome offer if if we can figure out how to how that will work. Yeah. Indeed. Well, yeah, I mean, it's our role, you know, since 1970, since we were founded, is to help drive the Fortran standards. And, you know, that's the numero uno aim of our organization. And this would seem to be within our remit to support you guys as, as much as possible. But anyway, thanks. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you for this suggestion and the ideas. Any other comment? Um, I thought I might just give a brief overview of the, the standards committee meeting that just wrapped up last week. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, so the, the next standard is scheduled to be published late next year. So 2023. So it, it is officially being titled Fortran 2023 now. Um, we're at this stage, just kind of wrapping up loose sods and ends. There's not really substantial work going on for any additional features or, or anything like that. Um, so at this committee meeting, one of the one of the major focuses was on the generics. Um, the, sub, the generic subgroup got all four of the specs papers with relate with regards to the, the upcoming templates feature. Those were all passed at this meeting. So we now have a firm, a firm foundation for, for what the template feature is gonna look like. That one is not gonna go into this next standard. So it won't be in the 2023 standard. It's, it's scheduled to go into the, what is, what is at this point termed the 2020Y standard. So it'll be the standard after next. Um, but, but now that we have a clear vision and, and you know, uh, approval from the rest of the committee to keep working, we're gonna, we're gonna start uh, seeing some more concrete syntax being defined and start working on edits with regards to how to get it actually into the standard. Um, the other thing that was a big focus at the meeting this week was what are we going to, what else are we going to be working on for 2020 Y? Um, so a couple of the subgroups uh, took a first stab at going through all of the suggestions, including lots of the ones that came from the Fortran Lang community and, and the discourse and et cetera. Um, Steve Lionel did a really good job of kind of collating and summarizing all of those different suggestions and providing them a, as, a, as a list. Um, if, you, if you noticed on the discourse, uh, there's at least one or two people who've, who've posted you know, links to, to that document that kind of summarized and listed all of them. And a couple of the subgroups on the committee did take a first pass at going through the different suggestions that would fall kind of under, under their purview and give kind of a ranking and, and desirability and effort required kind of status. And so uh, links to those have been posted in a couple of places in the discourse as well. So if you still have suggestions for what you want the committee to work on in terms of adding to the, to the language, to adding to the standard, there's still plenty of time. We haven't finalized anything yet. So uh, if you still want to provide suggestions, there's still opportunities. So. Um, I think that that kind of summarizes what I wanted to, to add. Let me add a couple of things too. One, the fact, uh, the fact that um, uh, we got those four papers approved without a lot of enormous dissent is an enormous difference from where things were 12, 18 months ago, where there was just a lot of... Um, uh, turmoil over what we were supposed to try to do with generics. The 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 subgroup has been working, you know, for, for the past year and a half to um, <clears throat> in between meetings to try to pull together, a, you know, a rational approach to this, and they've done an excellent job of both explaining. Um, the, you know what they what they hope to accomplish, um, going back to use cases to identify how these would solve real problems, and then explaining the rationale for certain things. You know what, why certain things were or were not the way they they were. So, um, uh, I, I it's a famous miracle that they got as far as they did and and got as much approval at, at the WG five meeting. The the other thing I I mentioned about two hundred two Y. Uh, uh, um, efforts coming up. Um, yeah, the, the, it, it is very early with respect to, you know, sort of collecting um, uh, uh, input. And so we're, you know, the, the, the goal is to have <clears throat> uh, some kind of very visible uh, 
product the project summary of what suggestions have been made and what progress has been made on them and and uh, uh, even you know identifying papers and things like that that are relevant to those topics the goal I believe that Steve Lionel has is that by the end of next WG5 meeting which is I think in June in Manchester next year um, uh, that we will have uh, a finalized list of the work items that we hope to put into 202Y. So even though you know the 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 window is open for suggestions, um, there is going to be a, a desire that people um, uh, do the work necessary to refine the 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 requests, um, to justify the requests in terms of in terms of return on investment for the uh, uh, return for the programmers and investment in the implementers uh, by the implementers and. Um, uh, to help us make a, a clear set of decisions uh, uh, in a little less than a year. Yeah, That's it. That's yeah. it. Perfect. Uh, thank you for the feedback and congratulations for the, what you did. Uh, I read the, the blog from uh, Brad. Uh, it, was, it sounds very really promising. So thank you for that. Thank you for the work. Any comments for Brad or Gary or question? No. Um, so yeah, it's almost nine here in Europe. So again, thank you for joining the meeting and uh, I wish you uh, a good day and see you next time.